when you and I go to imagine, we might be hit with a bunch of questions. And the, there are going to be voices of reason. There's going to be a voice of doubt. There's going to be a voice of time at telling you, well, this is going to take a while. Or it's going to say, do you really think this sounds outrageous? Are you really, are you really going to believe this? Or you would say, you clearly aren't that. So why, why try to force yourself to believe something that you aren't? And these voices will come, but really the, the attitude has to be that you silence those voices when you imagine. Because you're going to spend more time trying to answer questions you don't have the answer to than actually being the thing you want to be. We're moving from wishing to gr- granted. And it's about a change in the self, not a change in anything else. And so Neville has the quote, he says, leave the world alone and change the conception of yourself. That first part is the crucial part. It's being able to actually leave it alone. Even point, point everything out in your life. Point to your room and point to, the, point to wherever you're at and say, just leave it alone. Tell yourself to do that. Let it be exactly as it is. Don't try to change it. Try to change self. Because that is what you want to change. So the change has to be in, in, in a change of self. How you get there is up to you. How you go about changing yourself is up to you. Um, but I do think that it's better to start from the inside. And you're basically using, like I said, the image-making ability to change the image of yourself. But that first part is to leave it alone. Stop trying to answer all the questions. You're not, you don't have the answer because I, I, I've had so many things happen where there's no way I could have figured it out. And so you have to not spend time feeling gut punches and feeling like a tightness in your chest when these questions come. Because then you feel like you can't move into the state of being unless you first answer these questions. And Neville said, you know, if, if you have the question, you know, what if it doesn't work? He goes, then you haven't yet yielded into the state. And so when you're in that s- position where you're in that wrestling match with yourself, where you're in that, that war, where you're, the, the questions and the facts come, which is basically Job, the story of Job and, and his friends, which really kind of aren't his friends. His, they're just like, bombarding him with a million questions. That is what we do to ourselves when we go to, to change, when we go to move. And it's learning to silence those, vo- it's, it's practicing being able to make those voices, or those, um, yeah, those voices silent. And it's not about answering those questions. It's about being the thing. It's about mentally moving and mentally being in a new mental environment and accepting it. It's about changing the self than the things in front of you. And so the first part comes that I would, I would also say leave the questions alone. Practice being it more than answering those difficult questions because to, I don't quite know the time. And that might sound limiting to somebody, but I don't try to figure that out. So like when you go to sleep tonight, Try your best to fall asleep being the thing you want to be. How you get there, I don't, I don't know. I will start to feel that I am it. And once those questions start coming, I just silence them and I just, and then eventually you kind of surpass it. And then you kind of can just sit and be in it. And you can fall asleep in that state every night. And I found that to be the way to change oneself is being able to drop the outside and drop the questions. Because it's a, as I said, it's a law of being. It's more about what are you being, what are you aware of being, than it is about your worthiness or your the answer to these questions or anything else. You don't have to satisfy reason, you have to satisfy self. You don't have to satisfy those questions. And you won't, you won't stop until you do satisfy. So you might as well just satisfy. Because I don't know anybody who really wants something within themselves and just gives up. Usually they push and push and they find different ways if they don't. I think I once heard to say if you don't, if you, if you have a want, you don't need a how or something like that. Where you don't, you'll figure out how because you want this. And what you'll find is that you're going to find 
these questions to be an obstacle, fear to be an obstacle, and eventually you're going to silence each one of these voices. And the only voice you'll hear is the voice of your Savior, what you have identified as your Savior. That's what you're believing in, which is the version of yourself that you want to be, or the state that you want to be in. The That is what you identified as your Savior, and you believe in that. Believe you are that. So then your ears, your mental ears, start hearing the voice of fulfillment. So your mental eye starts seeing fulfillment, and you start being fulfilled in what you were once desiring. It's not a trick. I wouldn't call it a trick. I just would say, although the Bible did describe it as a deception or it's a, it's a deceiving, I I wouldn't call it that. But I can understand the idea there. But it is kind. Of, it's it's simply moving. If you know that the state you're in it's, is, is a state, if you can really see that it's a state that you're in and you want to change the state, I think when we give too much power to our current conception, we think that it, ha- it holds this, because we've been habitually in it for so long, we think it holds this power to where the new state almost seems unfeasible, yet it's a state within you as the state you are now is within you. And so... The war really turns on the moment you go to change. That's where a lot of there might be a lot of resistance. You're going to have questions, and you're going to have uh, the the habit of being it is going to try to grip you back. But what I've seen is that it's easier to commit to a state, a new one that you love, versus fighting an old one that you now hate. It's easier to commit to something new than it is to fight against something old. And that is the process: is being able to commit to new things inside. And anyone can do it. So when you go to sleep tonight, you don't allow yourself to sleep being the thing that you don't want to be. And, and the way you get there effortlessly is by the moment you go to change, you might, you might worry about what you need to change outside, but let it go and leave it, leave it exactly as it is. That is the key to make this. It's, it's a, it's a way to make the, the, the mind almost, you almost gave your mind oil. It's gonna it's gonna run more smoothly now when you don't you realize you don't have to satisfy the the questions and you don't have to uh, do anything externally in the moment. You just need to leave it exactly as it is. And when you do that, it kind of frees your mind to be able to be present in being the thing you want to be. So it's releasing this gives you sort of a mental lubricant in a way, and and then your thoughts will become more clear and your thoughts will feel more. Maybe they might be heightened in, in its vividness, but your thoughts will feel like you can sustain them longer. You can sustain the feeling of the thing you want longer than if you just force yourself to try to feel it or force yourself to avoid certain questions. Just learn to silence them and tune in as you would into a radio and tune into the to the words of the fulfillment. Really be sharp with your mind. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be messy. And you know how you, the more you do something in life, you become, I know for me, whenever I, whenever I started um, using lathes and building things, I, the more and more I did it, the, the sharper I became and I was able to see the, the details of things. Same is true in the imagination. And, and you'll find that I, I discovered that I had to give up. I had to give up answering questions. I had to give up the fighting. I had to give up the doubting. I had to give up the reasoning. And I, I really just had to believe. And I, what, I, what I'm believing in is that I believe in the one name, which is I am. It's not I do, it's I am. It's the only name. And so scripture tells us the name we use to, to change things. And so it's not they are, it's not they must be, it's I am. And that's what I change. It's a, considered a magical name. Edward is just a, a, a word we have here. But I am always remains the same. And that's the same message for everybody. And so it really is a universal message. And that's why it speaks to so many people. Because we all can relate with beingness. And you go back when you say, okay, am I this? No, I'm not that. And then am I this? I'm not that. And you start questioning everything. You really allow yourself to question everything. Just become curious about life. That's the way we discover answers. And ask yourself questions. Um, what does it really mean to move into a state? 
What does it really mean to, to, to be it and not try to be it? What is the difference? You know, ask yourself all these questions and, and really think about it. Because when you start to create a mental framework of how you're going to imagine, when you have all these questions answered, it becomes smoother. It becomes easier. It's lighter. I found it to be a lot less stressful when I finally gave myself the permission to no longer satisfy these questions. That understanding what these release, why, why, why am I, why does it feel like I'm being released from a certain mental prisons? Was I in a mental prison? And you just ask yourself all these questions. And the more you ask yourself, the more answers you're going to get. But you'll find that it's going to lead you to a place of knowing that it's about being this. It's about being it. And it's practicing that. It's using and practicing the name of I am. That is what we're doing. We're having faith in the one name, and we're changing that one name, and then we have faith in it. And we believe we are it. And you can spread belief to other people. You can believe in them. But I would recommend that you start with yourself. Learn to believe in yourself. And don't take this lightly. And I know I said you you should imagine lightly, but don't take this instruction lightly. Really put it to the test and see if it works. Change the one name and see if that starts to change things in your life. And it's it's a sacred name. And, you know, don't use it. It says, you know, God says, don't use my name in vain. And when I was younger, I was taught that that meant you don't say, oh, my God. And if you say, oh, my God, I, I didn't know what was going to happen to me, but I just felt this, well, maybe something one day might happen because I said that. And that's what I was taught that using the name in vain is. But that's not what using the name in vain is. It's uh, attaching all sorts of things to it that don't even benefit you, don't even want. You're using the, Don't use the name in vain. And don't believe in another name. And you'll see that I am is the only name, and that, ain't, that name is within us. It's our name. So we are the... We are the I am. And there's only one. And so that's where self-respect comes in. It's not standing up straight and giving a firm handshake, although that could be a symbol of it. Self-respect is attaching what is lovely to the name. You know, the Lord says that if you don't honor my name, or I, who, those who honor my name, I will honor, and those who despise my name, I will lightly esteem. Now, that sounds like a cruel God that's telling you to, you know, worship me or else I'm, you're screwed. But when you think about what the name is, if I honor the name of I am, then I will be honored. If I despise it, if I hate the name of I am, then I will be lightly esteemed. I'll barely be esteemed. And so to respect oneself is to respect the name of I am. And we attach to it things that we, we love. We have that freedom. So don't think you don't think you never have the freedom to do something inside. Never believe in the lie that you are stuck. There's always redemption. It's a constant source. It's really like a well of redemption. And it's in you. And so you don't have to go anywhere to, to do anything. Where you walk, it's holy. That is essentially the message that Neville's giving us from the Gospels through his interpretation. I just found his interpretation to be true and fascinating. And so take that message to heart to to not use a name in vain, but attach things that are meaningful and loving to, uh, to it. And then you'll be respecting yourself and you should be honored if you're honoring the name. So, uh, thanks for listening.